Welcome to the Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. I have a wonderful book to read today. 30 Prayers of Divine Surplus by Ernest Holmes. Recently, we read The Creative Mind by Ernest Holmes, and it was so much fun to read and so amazing. So many parts of it have resonated with me since we read it. Ernest Holmes actually wrote many books, and some of my favorite are these books he wrote that gathered up these prayers, and they were co-written with Raymond Charles Barker and Robert Bitzer in some cases. These prayers are powerful, so while this is a book, it very much will seem like a meditation, and many of these prayers focus on divine surplus and so much more gratitude power faith ecstasy of spirit divine action proper health better love there's so many cool things in here i think you're going to love it ernest holmes is best known for the science of the mind and so much more a great writer a great teacher now the beginning of this book are just prayers that are written by a number of science of mind teachers, including Robert Bitzer and Raymond Charles Barker, as well as Isabel Connor and Margaret Greenwood. And they're wonderful and fantastic, usually starting with a single biblical phrase. And at the end, there is a wonderful essay by Ernest Holmes. Thirty Prayers of Divine Surplus by Ernest Holmes and others. The word limitation seems to mean a variety of things. To some, it connotes deprivation, a condition induced by another person or thing. To others, it is the firm line of demarcation between a dream and fulfillment. And as far as most people are concerned, certain limitations are to be expected, in fact are inherent in specified situations, places, persons, and things. So it comes as a shock when it is revealed to them that the limitation they found was the product of their own negative thinking. It hadn't existed until they found it. They shun the notion of any personal responsibility, but once they accept the truth that the power of so-called limitations stems from their own negative thought, things begin to happen. Good things. Stop limiting yourself. Are You Thankful Enough? By Raymond Charles Barker Thanksgiving is a today idea, an instant idea. You can glory in the past, but be an active, vital, and producing person today. There is no harm in dwelling on the good of the past and being thankful for the good of the past, but if you want to use this idea, you must use it in terms of today. Look around you today, and you will find many things for which you can say thank you. Certainly you have a problem, but they are minor compared to the good at hand, and as you recognize God in this good, it responds to you with increased good. Recognize the good that you have, and the good that you are, and more good will flow out from you to produce what you want. It is that simple. The moment that you give thanks to a power and a presence which is greater than you are, You have shifted your attention from yourself to God. The moment you begin to be thankful and appreciative, it moves your mind out of the orbit of self-consciousness into the orbit of God-consciousness. We believe in a universal presence which is intelligent. We believe that we are the creations of this universal intelligence, and we believe in a universal law which produces what we mentally and emotionally conceive. Therefore, it is wise in our treatment and meditation to recognize that God is the only source, mind is the only cause, love is the only presence, and production is the only law. When I think of Thanksgiving, I often go back in memory and do the usual things that most people do. You will be doing this on Thanksgiving Day. You will be thanking God for things, people, and conditions, but go a step farther. Thank God for God. Thank God that you are in a presence that does not change, 
in a mind that always will inspire, and for being the outlet of life and health which is given unto you by a power that is greater than you. Thank God for the living spirit in every man that you walk among people who are sons of God, whether they know it or not, that in the minds of all people everywhere there is an essential goodness, a spirit that is not of the flesh nor of the will of man, but of God. Thank God that you are in a universe which is mathematically accurate and which always responds to you as you respond to it. Thank God for love, that great quality, which is difficult to define, yet is that something which maintains us all as one. Thank you, God. From the deeps of our hearts, we do thank God for all the good there is. We know and understand that gratitude opens the very windows of heaven. Thanksgiving opens every channel of life, health, happiness, and abundance. Every door opens to the grateful heart. Be grateful today. List all the things you can be grateful for and watch how the law of increase and multiplication will supply your every need. Make gratitude an unbreakable habit. Jesus was grateful for the despised loaves and fishes, and they increased and fed a multitude. Being grateful and using what we have at hand, like the widow woman with the cruise of oil and the handful of meal, 1 Kings 17, 9, 16, makes way for God's plenty to roll in. Gratitude prospers. Complaint impoverishes. Gratitude attracts abundance. Complaining drives prosperity away. Gratitude expands. Complaint belittles. Bring joy, praise, and thanksgiving into your daily work. In all your ways give thanks, and sorrow, sickness, lack, and limitation will forever flee away. Paul M. Brunet Every day is harvest time. Those who live in California do not have the feeling of the annual harvest gathered safely in. A field may yield four or five crops of alfalfa a year, or a constant supply of fresh vegetables. Daily we harvest something that has been sown and sow seeds for future crops which we shall reap. Likewise, each day we are experiencing what we have been thinking. Simultaneously we reap that which we have previously thought and think that which we are going to experience next. We are eternally sowing and eternally reaping. Life does not stand still. We may be waiting for some ideas to materialize, but at the time be enjoying good for that which we have thought previously. This cycle of cause and effect, or the thought and its action, is ever in operation. Thus we enjoy the good that we have but anticipate an even greater good will come to us. Every day is harvest time. Robert H. Bitzer Thanksgiving is powerful. Each of us has witnessed the power of thanksgiving in our lives. We have seen it in grateful eyes of a friend and in the stream of good events that inevitably follows. But too many of us are unaware of the law that governs an expression of gratitude. And so long as we remain unconscious of the law, we are unable to extend and expand its effect in our lives. Ask yourself, when I express gratitude and thanks to my fellow man or to God, what automatically happens? Your answer will always be more good. Thus, the law. Gratitude multiplies good. The reason is obvious. Thanksgiving is acceptance. While you are in the act of giving thanks, your mind is filled with the good, either the good thing you have already experienced or the good you expect in the future. Thus, it is that thanksgiving is such an important part of prayer. It is evidence of faith and sublime expectancy. It is noteworthy that Jesus never uttered a prayer without expressing gratitude. Expression of gratitude multiplies the good already received and hastens the good expected. Walter Edward Ramsey Kernel of Truth One kernel of truth that has stood the test of 2,000 years is known as the Beatitudes. In these, Jesus emphasized with all the vigor of his youth that life creates life. 
not to be tortured and killed, but to evolve and prosper. The word beatus, which he used nine times at the beginnings of his nine statements, means happy. Happy with an important, exalted kind of happiness. First he named universal problems, poverty, grief, and suppression, and established their opposites. Actually, these statements are parables, having a subtler spiritual meaning for those who have ears to hear. Also, they are treatments, for they deny the problem and assert perfection. Next, Jesus gave the technique of mind action to correspond with the desired results. As ye sow, so shall ye reap honesty, mercy, clarity, and balance. And lastly, if we would be deeply happy, he urged that we overcome our own and our neighbor's fleshly lethargy by having the courage of our convictions. This core and kernel can well serve as the seed of the tree of the happy life. Marguerite Iverson God Faith is the light of my life. Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect? James 2.2.2 I am still in the presence of the Absolute, the one power, the one love of the universe. I am receptive this instant to the highest good and await the direction of the one intelligence. I move into right action and go forward into each new experience with the faith of God, that which is revealed to me through experience. I examine, taking only the nectar, I store it momentarily for use in the joyous living of the perfect now. Faith and confidence fill my being and dispel any darkness that may have lingered from the past. God is my faith this moment. I am never alone for God is my ever constant companion that walks with me in eternity. The eternal now I am sustained in the presence of God, living in me and peace of mind is forever the reward of this recognition. The perfect light of the divine radiates throughout my world and heals every thought and condition, for God is my faith. Marianne L. Freeland I move with easy power. Hast thou not heard that the Creator of the ends of the earth fainteth not, neither is weary? Isaiah 40.28 I deny that there can be any permanence to any impairment I may now be experiencing. All fear, all panic, trauma, or tension of the past are now evaporated. I forget I was ever overtired. I do not resist my work, am not emotionally involved, and I have no self will about my work of the past or future. I love and bless my work and responsibility. I am cleansed and healed by freely circulating divine ideas. I accept them willingly, use them to the full, and release them voluntarily when they have served their purpose. I am in perfect balance and move easily in any direction. Powered by infinite mind and eternal life, every organ's functioning coordinates in divine purpose. Peace, love, vigor, and complete mobility in mind and spirit externalize in my body by the action of the one law. I accept with joy full, free, strong, accurate mobility in mind and body. Marguerite Iverson There are no accidents in God. Now ye are the body of Christ. 1 Corinthians 12.27 There are no broken bones in the body of Christ. There can be no break in the perfect flow of spirit. I am the expression of that rhythm of life. One with the whole of life, an integrated spiritual being. There can be no break in the spiritual body, which body we all share. There are no accidents in God. Every experience in my life blesses me and brings me closer to the perfect realization of the one perfect life God made manifest as me and my environment. If there seems to be a temporary interruption in the harmony of my world, I will fear no evil, for thou, the divine law of life, art with me, healing me, protecting me, leading me ever nearer to my good. The great involuntary life which holds the moon 
and the stars in their places controls and maintains my body. I am one with the harmony and balance of the universe. I am one with the body of Christ. I am one with the perfect flow of spirit. I rest in this knowledge. I am healed. Cornelia Addington Divine intelligence guides me. And the Lord shall guide thee continually, and thou shalt be like a watered garden. Isaiah 58.11 Whether or not I am conscious of its guidance, it never fails to give positive direction to my every effort. I have absolute faith in the unfailing wisdom of this guiding intelligence, for I know that right is and that right governs. God is omnipresent and good is established. Even though I might not know what good is, good governs and guides. I am guided, directed, and controlled by that which is right. For my life is the expression of God-mind, conscious of its own rightness of being, the power within me, even unbeknown to me, holds me consciously in the path of my good. Anything that might be detrimental to me, the law of my life rebuffs. I am aware of the tallness of right. Consequently, everything I do sustains rightness. I am not subject to mistakes nor error. Nothing of confusion can exist in any of my life relationships, since right governs right action prevails. Everything in my life conforms to this pattern of right. Robert H. Bitzer There is no truth in evil. Ye that love the Lord hate evil, Psalm 97.10 In my life today God alone has power. I refuse to accept the authority of negatives. I am poised in my certainty of truth. Disease cannot function in my body, nor fear operate in my mind. In me the spirit of life is triumphant. My body responds to my conscious knowing of perfect health. My emotions are stabilized by my knowledge of divine love. I am physically well, mentally alert, and conscious of God as my real self. There is no truth in gossip, and I will not listen. Believe in my friends, relatives, and co-workers. Through each one, God is enriching my life. I speak well of every man, and every man speaks well of me. Only words of truth and love go forth from my lips today. There is no truth in discussions of lack, fear of the future, or prophecies of disaster. I refuse to wallow in the viciousness of suspicion. I have taken my stand on the principle of truth. I will stand up and be counted as a religious scientist. Raymond Charles Barker I experience God's good. The Lord is good to all, and His tender mercies are over all His works. Psalm 145.9 God is the only presence and the only experience in my mind and soul. This moment I am conscious of this perfect presence, this divine wisdom, this eternal wholeness. I know that God is my life, and I am sure that God loves me and desires me to experience only the good. Right now I recognize the principle of perfect being operating in and through me. I know that within his divine principle of perfection there is no fear, no want, no doubt, and no limitation. All of God's good is available to me at this very moment and I accept it with great thanks. All that is unlike this perfection which is God is now erased from my mind. In its place, I know God's good is now in operation. I let the divine within me restore me to perfect health, perfect harmony, and perfect peace. I accept the joy and peace of God and am glad. This is the truth about me now. I accept this truth subjectively. Let it be so. Walter Edward Ramsey I am free under the one spiritual law of life. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. 2 Corinthians 3.17 The Spirit of the Lord, the law, guarantees the immediate, faithful fulfillment of my every desire and demand. The law is my silent servant, executing with dispatch and exactness my every command, according to my faith. 
I choose and accept my creative liberty in God, whose service is perfect freedom. I cannot be bound by limitation, race, belief, or prejudice, except, and to the degree I accept them. This day I claim my complete freedom from all negation, as I accept my Christ consciousness of truth and release all others into their divine creativeness. Divine love is never coercive, but is the one cohesive force in the universe. My awareness of this love inevitably brings to me my own, and I live joyously, sustained in the creative freedom of spirit. I rejoice that I know the truth, and the truth makes me free. Margaret Greenwood Nothing can hurt me. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Luke 10.19 This is a day of power, and nothing can by any means hurt me. Quietly I declare the truth, realizing and knowing that within me is the divine power of motivation. This power guides me in everything that I undertake. I cannot be separated from it. This power frees me from every thought of limitation of any kind. Every person that I contact feels the strength of this power that radiates from the center of my being and returns in kind the joy and love which I express. Every word I speak is positive and constructive, uplifting and loving, for his power is back of the word. Through this power I tread on the serpents and scorpions of negativity, trample the enemy of animosity and fear. God within me, as the director of power, guides me to my good, and as I give thanks, I come into a greater realization of the one and only power whereby nothing can in any way hurt me. Gretchen F. Bremerman I feel the ecstasy of the Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, Luke 4.18. In my life I see only the beauty and glory of divine law in operation. The clouds of human thinking which come between my sense thought and truth are pierced and dispelled by my recognition of the universality of God. From the littlest, most insignificant episode of my life, and from those barnacles of past pain and confusion, I am delivered to thy acceptance and glory of reality. I attune my consciousness to divine mind and all the power around me, shouts of something greater and more beautiful than anything I have conceived as possible. I am uplifted in my thought. I know this earth with all its common trifles will pass away. The exaltation of spiritual union is infinitely more thrilling than any sensation of the physical body. It is as the excitement induced by jazz compared with the sublimity of feeling created by a great symphony. I now close myself to all outside influences and open myself wide to the inflow of divine spirit. Isabel C. Connor My courage is firm and fresh. Take courage and do, and the Lord shall be with the good. 2 Chronicles 19.11 My courage never wavers, for my faith is steady. I am always prepared for every situation. I meet each challenge as an opportunity. I am never reluctant about my expression. I put all of my energy into its accomplishment. Consequently, I do not waste time nor energy in trying to avoid my task. I apply myself diligently and quickly, knowing that each experience reveals my strength and adds to my Christ stature. I am without fear. I act with courage, for my conviction of right is my power. The great creative power of the universe fortifies me. The mind of the universe inspires me. This knowledge keeps my courage fresh and my faith enthusiastic. Daily, I am aware of an inner strength and power which is greater than any demand upon me. With such strength, courage is adamant. Timidity and shyness have no place in my experience. My world is friendly and I have no fear of people. My trust in the all-protectiveness of good sustains me. Robert H. Bitzer God heals me. Will take sickness away from the midst of thee, 
Exodus 23:25. God is the healing power and strength of my being, the great physician in the midst of every thought and atom of my body and flesh. I cannot retain a single ache or pain. No sorrow, mistake, or self-condemnation can make me believe that God ever sent me or any man punishment to try or test, hurt or hinder the peace and harmony of my life. Surely, and certainly the healing Christ within removes every fear and doubt. I know in God's truth there is no reason for pain or suffering of any kind. I cannot be made liable to race belief, hatred or other problems of God. In God, I am made free from every irritation, inflammation, virus, and infection. Yes, God heals me, here and now, today and always. He is indeed the vitality, vibrancy, and virility of my soul. Holy healing Christ, I do thank thee that this is forever so. Amen. Paul M. Brunette I accept divine action. Thy righteous is like the great mountains, thy judgments are a great deep, O Lord. Psalm 16.6 There is one action. That action is God. God is the pure act of being. Infinite intelligence reveals this divine action of God being everywhere. And we know we are surrounded by its power. It flows through our body. It beats through our heart. Breathes through our lungs, moves through our organs, acts through our mind, knows through our consciousness, reposes in our subconsciousness. We are forever unified with this divine right action. It flows majestically and serenely through our life. We know that it is the essence of living reality, a ceaseless dynamic energy of life, health and strength operating in peace with goodwill toward all. Divine right action is forever giving of itself for the blessing of all, and none can pass beyond the reach of this infinite action, for it pervades all universes forevermore. Right where I am, there flows even now this healing consciousness of God's presence, acting in my behalf, ordaining my life unto righteousness and truth, LLC Boyd. I steadfastly think the good. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. Galatians 5 1. I am surrounded on every hand by good, for I live in the presence of God. Today I dedicate my thinking to the God which fills my experience. I shall not let any person situation or emotion swerve me from my appointed course. I am determined to let the indwelling spirit be in me all that it wants to be. To this end I speak the truth, act as the truth, and behold the truth in my fellow man. In every moment God is active where I am. The divine mind is thinking in me, and perfect love is being released by me. I judge not by the appearances of evil. They have no fascination for me. I steadfastly behold God in action in all things, events, and people. I think health, prosperity, and peace. I think what God thinks. I know what God knows. I love what God loves. The law of life supports me in this creative determination. God backs me up with his own mind, law, and love. I am of value to life because I think aright. Raymond Charles Barker I have perfect health now. Be not conformed to this world, Romans 12.2. I give myself now a spiritual health treatment at first cause level. That level is one lie, unconditioned region of reality within me which exists on its own, forever perfect. It knows nothing of my subconscious, nor of any of my self-classifications and finalizations. It is my Father's consciousness. I am its keeper. It acts everywhere as the one all cause, even so in me. I am its part. It is my wholeness, aware of it, 
heaven on earth is established for me. The illness fears of this world find no pattern in me. My health is divinely contagious. I am an immune to the ill bred. Age brings me no decline. The spirit which begets me the better without ceasing is youth to my soul, mind, and body. My future health is now secured in my acceptance of God's knowledge of my health as mine. I pause in gladness. The deep in me rejoices. It is so, and I know it for certain. God rules all everywhere, and his judgment of me is perfect and unfailing. Fritz Hermans I attract power. Nothing can be hidden. Luke 12, 12. Immersed in my own creative atmosphere, I attract the replica of my thought. No power repels what I attract through thinking. The law of mind is constantly at work. I emphasize the strength and power of this law in my thinking. Depending upon it with precision, I unify myself with the whole, align my thoughts with universal intelligence, believe that good will gravitate towards me at all times because creative good honors my constructive thought. It cannot fail. Healing manifests when a consciousness has been developed and deliberately employed through embodiment of consistent ideas, fortified by spontaneity and definite power, incorporated in my word, which is the law of my life. This will work for me as I comprehend it. Then, a corresponding realization of the powerful agency in the healing presence takes place within. It generates dominion over earth consciousness, gives radiant awareness, further spiritual evolution, rejecting inconsequentials. I thereby attract powerful vibrations corresponding to my own creativeness. Dorothy B. Arnheider I am ready for increased living. A good man, out of the good treasures of the heart, bringeth forth good things. Matthew 12.35 God mind in me knows that my desire for increased self-expression is legitimate and irresistible. God has given me the power to think and the ability to easily dissolve one experience and project another. God has given me the right to decree what shall come into my life. I now let the universal creative mind, which is God, express in and through me. I am ready for and accept new ideas. I am ready for an increased livingness. All avenues are open for an influx of new ideas. There is nothing in me that believes in disappointment, nor that any past experience has the power to interfere with or delay. The parts of me are one in the presence of God. I cannot be separated from the manifestation of good. Nothing can resist it nor obstruct it. I realize that the greater the manifestation of good in my world, the greater is my expression of the glory of God. I am ready for increased expression. Hurry it up. My mind molds etheric substance. So God created man in his own image. Genesis 1-7 how wonderful that I am attaining the greatest of all knowledge, that the nature of the substance of God fills and penetrates all space and is molded and shaped by the thoughts I think. Out of this light stuff, whether I am conscious of it or not, I am making all the conditions of my life. Since I can think as I please, I now definitely select exactly what I really want to have come to pass. I speak out from the abundance of my heart, I speak boldly with strong feeling knowing that I glorify God through being the glorious being he had in mind when he brought me forth. No longer do I merely hope that conditions will grow better. I set into motion the infallible law that takes the invisible universal substance surrounding me and shapes it into the events, circumstances, things that will make this world a better place for myself, my loved ones. And for everyone, everywhere, Ruth E. Chu. Divine intelligence guides me. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel. Psalm 73, 24. I, at this moment, align to
to become conscious of the power of divine intelligence within me. The knower within me has the answer to every question, the perfect solution to every problem, and is available and ready to guide me in all ways. I know that with this guidance it is impossible for me to fail. I am guided to all necessary knowledge. Intuition is mine to use for every manner of good in my life and the lives of those with whom I come in contact. My complete acceptance of this intelligence of God causes all things to work out right in my life and affairs. I am always in my right place at the right time doing the right thing. I am right this moment under the law of divine right action and it is established in all that I undertake. All possibility of mistake, all worry about the future is dropped from my mind. There is no need for worry and fretting while I have God's perfect guidance and I know it. Walter Edward Ramsey I calmly direct life. Great peace have they which love thy law. Psalm 119, 165 there are no emergencies in God's world, and in His world I live today. I refuse to be disturbed, confused, or unhappy. In me God lives as joyous, creative freedom. I think straight and bring to pass the desires of my heart. I keep my eyes on my goal and turn not aside. All speculations of evil have no interest for me. I am too busy knowing what God knows to waste my time or energy on evil, Today is one accomplishment. I do all things with calmness, order, and intelligence. I subconsciously expect all things to work together for my good. I cooperate with the divine in my fellow man. I am inspired to right action and do all things well. My mind is maintained in peace, harmony, and goodwill. I affirm my divine inheritance of plenty, power, and health. Divine love upholds me in my selection of calmness, work with ease, for my mind is clear and my spirit is joyous. I enjoy life, for I know that my life is God's beloved activity. Raymond Charles Barker My business is God's business. Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? Luke 2.49 I go forth to my daily work in perfect confidence, knowing the omnipresence of God includes my place of business and everyone in it. I let go of all false sense of responsibility, knowing that it is divine intelligence in me, as me, which does the work. I serve joyously and lovingly, for I serve God in all people. The eternal givingness of life is expressed through me as my work and all that I do. Divine enthusiasm flows through me to the people I serve, and they reflect it back to me. Knowing that infinite wisdom is forever within me, I trust that it wisdom in all things. Thus I am guided to do and say the right thing at the right time. There is only one activity in the universe, the divine activity of spirit within and upon itself. My work is is an individualized expression of divine activity. Therefore, it is right and good. My business is God's business. My opportunities are limitless. My success is assured. I bless my work. I am grateful to be a partner with God, and so it is. Martha Jane Reed God prospers me today and always. In the house of the righteous is much treasure. Proverbs 15.6 Rich, fruitful, and prosperous is the law of abundance in my life. This day and every day God prospers me. Asleep or awake, divine plenty is always blessing me in every right and wholesome way. Of God's abundance in my life, there shall be no end. I work with the rich, lavish opulence of God, and He always works with me. In praise and rejoicing I find my good in every living thing. God never withholds His good from me or anyone. I cannot be made to think, speak, or rehearse, lack or limitation about myself or another. The word of God in me is the word of wealth, expansion, increase, and multiplication. He prospers me. He prospers me. By his own love, he prospers me. In everything I do or see, I know God's love shall prosper me. 
Lord, I do thank thee for this abundance now and always. Paul M. Brunette I am the full expression of life. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. Proverbs 3 9. Since I am an integrated being, every phase of my life expression is active. Every faculty of my mind is keen and alert. God action sustains right expression in my thinking and in my emotions. Whatever I set out to do, I accomplish. Whatever my talents need for their full expression is included within the talents themselves. Since I do not bestow these talents upon myself, the power that did create them also provided the ways and means for their full expansion. I do not neglect my work even though it does not provide the full expression that I require. Applying myself where I am to the best of my ability ensures personal expansion and soul growth. I do not let a seeming partial expression interfere with my full and complete expression. The power within me is greater than any channel through which it might operate. Since it is infinite, it provides countless channels through which I can express. Robert H. Bitzer I choose my experiences. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Matthew 7.7 7. I know there is always one best way to do everything. I seek this way first. I do this by knowing that that which is right in everything is one thing, a common denominator of being, exhibiting itself as an infinite multiplicity of creation. I do not try to sort out and classify this multiplicity unifying with the one. I see that everything is all right because it is an exhibition of the one at some level of experience. In this unity, my uniqueness of being is understood, and I see which experiences satisfy my God-given individuality, whether marriage and home artistry and inventiveness, success in industry, adventure and travel, whatever there is always a right and best way already known in the one, with which I am in complete unity. I center my attention on that which I have chosen. I clarify the idea. I love the idea. I am true to the idea. If my mind wanders or fear appears, I return to the center of my being to clarify and love my choice. Jess V. Long Life is delightful. In the multitude of my thoughts within me, thy comforts delight my soul. Psalm 9419 I am filled with the wonderful joy of living and a sense of complete vibrant good health. I radiate energy and I am free of any sense of effort or fatigue. As my body rebuilds itself, I look upon everything in my life with new eyes. I see with the eyes of God and everything I see is good. I become as a little child in my receptivity and my enjoyment of everyday occurrences. I am continually finding new interests and enjoyable activities for both my working and leisure hours. My life is filled with good and I relish every moment of it. I am led through all situations in vigorous health and with boundless energy and enthusiasm for everything I undertake. I awake each day renewed and refreshed, eager for the new experiences and delightful surprises that are forever coming my way. The mighty power of God within me furnishes intuitive guidance for any situation and my feet are always kept on the proper path. I create my good today. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, Psalm 37, 23. This world is God equipped into it. The infinite mind has poured all of itself. Divine ideas saturate my present living. Divine love maintains me in affection and security. I am free to create the good I want. With my mind and emotions, I now use the great subjective law. I declare into it what I want and know my demonstration is appearing. God never limits me. I now erase all subconscious self-limitations. I am no longer my own problem. I am the creative expression of a perfect mind living in a universe that responds to my thought. 
I now bring to pass what I select. Unlimited power acts in me to produce for my chosen good. I let my good happen to me. There is nothing but perfect God, perfect man, and perfect being. All else as nothing, and I refuse to accept it as real. There is no power on earth opposing me. All of God is for me and accomplishes what I direct. My good happens to me. Raymond Charles Barker I appreciate my individuality. For one star differeth from another in glory. 1 Corinthians 15.41 The panoramic expression of God's heavenly ideas, my eternal progress is assured. Negative comparisons find no place in the orbit of my consciousness. I know there is no great nor small in the mind which creates all. I am God's star of infinite promise, unfoldment, fulfillment. I grow in delight in the inner radiation of His great celestial light. Benighted thoughts of every conceit, inadequacy, inferiority quickly vanish in this glowing realization. Priceless and matchless is the gifted individualization of God-mind in me. Devoted and ardent is my attention and responsiveness. Graciously, spaciously, it flourishes, expands, expresses through me in endless originality, versatility, power. Great is my awareness and thanks to the greatness of my Father within, Elder Leach. I abide in God's presence. My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. Exodus 33.14 I rejoice today in the assurance that God's presence is ever with me, integrated in my very being. As I recognize this unceasingly, all good manifests as my portion. Through this recognition, all negative thoughts of confusion, discord, or weariness are dissolved, and I express the God qualities of harmony, serenity, and rest. This rest has nothing in it of stagnation. It is part of the God activity of the universe, an orderly sequence. This is the sequence of activity, rest, activity, rest, the heartbeat of eternal life. I am part of this divine order. Thus, I do not grow fatigued, nor discouraged, nor fearful of the path ahead. For this loving presence is with me all the way, responding instantly to my call upon it. It is my supply in every need, the inspiration for my activity, my blessed rest as I abide in its sweet security. I am grateful for the ineffable peace that this consciousness brings to me, for I do abide in God's presence. Iva S. Steckel The awareness of my God self satisfies every longing. My soul longeth for the courts of the Lord. Psalms 84.2 my soul seeks something greater than anything that it has ever imagined, envisioned, or felt. My soul, in its yearning for completeness, senses a greater power than it has ever witnessed. This longing is the divine urge within me, seeking to maintain its consciousness of completeness. The joy that I seek is the awareness of God in me. Even though I may not know what form my joy shall take, there is that within me which does know and takes the necessary steps to see that my joy is made complete. My real longing is to come into the full possession of my God self with its God attributes and its God governing facilities. I am never disturbed by an unsatisfied longing because I know that underneath such a desire my soul is reaching out to consciously establish its identity in God mind. Every experience in life is an opportunity to bring this about. Robert H. Bitzer What I want, I have being it. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Exodus 23 God as I is spirit. It is my consciousness and rules as power. What it beholds as very good is what I mind with wisdom, intelligence, and love. No longer do I draw conclusions from appearances. What God knows I understand before it appears as fact. I cannot picture electricity, I use its current. I do not picture gravitation, I conform to it. 
Even so will I perfect my use of the mind of God in me and shall not worship graven images, neither in consciousness, nor in form, nor in feelings. For I am persuaded to serve the only cause as it acts in me from the beginning. Hence will I not start at the end or in the middle. If I want peace and I want it, I have it, being it. If I want wealth and I do want it, I am it, enacting it. I shall not surrender my spiritual birthright for a mess of race thought pottage. Only the Lord God omnipotent in me reigneth as I rule myself. J. Fritz Hermans Put God first, hereby know, we that dwell in him, and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. John 4.13 there is a supreme significance to all experience, and so today I refuse to underestimate the importance of any good in the scheme of my life. I let God out into my world in a spontaneous, joyous act, which benefits everyone. God consciousness is not self-neglect, but simply a releasing of my own best energies in positive directions. I choose to be a happy, outgoing person using my talents and abilities to benefit everyone without neglecting to benefit myself. I expect to be original in my thoughts, creative in my actions, and wholehearted in my demonstrations. Putting God first releases me from a sense of self-importance, establishing me in poise and mental balance. I know how to maintain my perspective, to keep myself alive, alert, and growing. There is full self-acceptance when I place God first in my world. My best impulses are appreciated because they are God, created. As they have divine approval, they are fulfilled. Marjorie L. Ingram The Essence of Science of Mind In its broadest and truest sense includes the best in science, religion, and philosophy. Science of Mind is not a personal opinion nor is it a special revelation. It is the result of the best thought of the ages. It borrows much of its light from others, but in so doing does not rob anyone, for truth is universal and never personal. We need the entire revelation of the whole world, and even with this, we shall have little enough. The universal is impersonal. It gives alike to all. It is no respecter of persons. It values each alike. The philosopher the priest and the professor, the humanitarian and the empire builder, all have caught some gleam of the eternal glory, and each has spoken in his own tongue that language which is of itself universal. Science of mind does not scoff at the works of medical science, for instance. They both work to help and heal humanity. Science of mind is a complement to medical science, and when so understood and practiced, will help heal the world of its physical infirmities. The world of knowledge needs to be knit together and not pulled apart. We have no objection to any form of healing. What we insist on is that there can be no permanent healing of the body without a correspondingly permanent poise in the mental and emotional life. Psychosomatic medicine has shown that mental disturbances, conscious or subjective, produce physical reactions in the body. If the body is to be permanently well, one's mental life must be creative, peaceful, and happy. This is the purpose of any mental healing, whether it is approached from the psychological or the metaphysical angle. Psychology and metaphysics are but two ends of the same thing. They must meet somewhere in consciousness and merge into a perfect unit. Science of mind teaches that there is a favorable physical reaction and effect which follows a pattern of thought, incorporating ideas of health for the law of cause and effect, governs everything. Similarly, it is held that right thinking will result in a greater experience of success and abundance. A successful man thinks success and the law of mind that reacts has no other choice than to produce an effect corresponding to the causative idea. The road to freedom lies not through mysteries or occult performances, but through intelligent use of natural forces and laws. The law of mind is a natural law in the spiritual world. 
we need not ask why this is so. There can be no reason given as to why the truth is true. We do not create laws and principles, but discover and make use of them. Let us accept this position relative to the law of mind and spirit and see what we can do with it, rather than how we may contradict the inevitable. Our mind and spirit is our echo of the eternal thing, itself, and the sooner we discover this fact, the sooner we shall be made free and happy. God, the universal life force and energy running through everything, is an intelligent presence pervading all space, a self-existent cause, a perfect unit, a complete wholeness. The unthinking would believe that God is a spirit who keeps books and checks up on the wrongdoings of each individual member of the human race that he sends some to heaven and some to hell and all for his glory, each according to his own light, has believed in the kind of God who best fitted his personal ideas or in the idea of God that has been imposed upon him by ignorant or superstitious leaders. But over there has been the voice of those crying in the wilderness of superstition, ignorance, doubt, and fear, the voice of those who have thought the thing through to conclusions that have been independent of race beliefs, of the subtleties of religious dogma, and of theological superstitions. These have been the way-showers of humanity, and millions have lighted candles from their flames. But the world progresses slowly. Evolution and the growth of knowledge and wisdom is a process of time and experience. In olden times, an intelligent few understood much deeper truths than were known by the multitude but the common people were thrown a few crumbs from the tables of those who were in the know. These crumbs were shrouded in mystery, symbol, word, picture, and parable. Perhaps this was the only way in which wisdom could have been taught at all in principle. The great religions of the world do not differ as much as they appear to, stripped of their accumulations of adornments and observances and incrustations of interpretations it is found that each acknowledges that there is one central power, force, or God, which is self-existent, and it is from this one power that all things emanate. All of life flows from it and is a part of it. Nothing can exist separate from it. The Christian interpretation of the ultimate nature of the creative source of the universe places more emphasis on the life of the individual as being an integral part of the one life. For this reason, an intelligent understanding of the fundamental concepts of Christianity has had a greater appeal to the progressing peoples of the world. But even in the Christian religion, much of its real meaning is hidden by the words that are misleading and symbols that but few understand. We could scarcely find a greater riddle to solve than the meaning of the Holy Trinity. Also, most people either reject the Bible entirely or accept it totally and literally. Both these methods are mistakes. Religion is a man's idea of God, and the Bible is a written declaration of the belief in God held by a greater race of people, the Jews. It is, in many respects, the greatest book ever written and does truly point a way to eternal values but it is only one explanation and cannot be considered the only light on religion, for there are many others, which taken together weave the story of truth into a complete and unified pattern. The many sacred books of the East constitute other Bibles which point ways to the truth, but each is only another way and cannot be considered to be the way. All races have had their religions and have had their Bibles. All have pointed away to ultimate values, but can we say that any of them have really pointed the way? It is unreasonable to suppose that any one person or race encompasses all the truth and alone can reveal the way of life for all others. This viewpoint does not apply to other forms of knowledge, but seems to be adopted only when dealing with religion, and it is a great mistake. The world is tired of mysteries, does not understand symbols and longs for reality. What is the truth? Where may it be found? And how may it be used? These are the questions that an intelligent person asks, and he must have an answer. 
he may find his answer in the study of science of mind. Shorn of dogmatism, freed from superstition, open at the top for greater illumination, unbound and unlimited, science of mind offers the student of life the most understandable and intelligent approach that the world has so far achieved. Intellectual freedom and religious liberty are necessary to the unfolding spirit in man. Whatever is true is free to all alike. We cannot cover the infinite with a finite blanket. It refuses to be concealed. God has no favorites and knows no privileged class. Science of mind reads every man's Bible and gleans the truths contained therein. It studies all people's knowledge and draws from each that which is self-evident. Only that which is self-evident can stand the test of reason and time without criticism, without judgment, but by true discrimination, that which is true and provable may be discovered and put to practical use. We should take the truth wherever we find it, making it our very own, borrowing knowledge of reality from all sources, taking the best from every study. Science of mind brings together the highest enlightenment of the ages. As we approach a consideration of science of mind in relationship to our daily living, we need not consider it as being deep, abstract, or probably beyond our ability to fully understand. Although it is necessarily founded on great truths, at the same time, it is very simple. All too often, we tend to complicate our thoughts and ideas rather than keeping them simple and usable. Let us remember as we progress to keep our minds open to new ideas and be ready to accept old ideas which have been shorn of their worn out cloaks. We want to be happy and willing to learn more about ourselves to discover more of that life of which we are a part and at the same time to ascertain the nature of the law through which it makes itself manifest. We do live in a spiritual universe, a universe that is intelligent and creative, and it is a thing of law and order. It is God's universe, a divine idea and thought that has become manifest, God becoming that which he has created through the law of his nature. It is one stupendous whole with God as both cause and effect, idea and manifestation and the law by which one becomes the other are all one in the inherent nature of God. Man is an individualized center of God-conscious life, a point in the infinite sea of life and an intelligent self-knowing point. Man is the outcome of God's desire to express himself as individuality. The whole meaning of experience is to promote this individuality and thus to provide a fuller channel for the expression of the Supreme Spirit of the universe. We note that through the ages people have been healed by the prayer of faith, which is a practice of every religion. There is a law governing this possibility, else it never could happen. It is the business of science of mind to view the facts, evaluate the causes, and in so doing provide a definite knowledge of the law which governs the facts. What does one do when he prays? He talks to God. Where does he talk to God? He talks to God in his own mind, through his own thought or feeling. It is quite impossible for one to talk to God outside himself, for he cannot go outside himself. Whatever God he talks to is in his own thought or approached through his own thinking, feeling, and knowing. The man then who asks God for abundance asks God in his own mind. God answers through his affairs. But some have asked God for money for some worthy purpose and have not received an answer to their prayers. Indeed, to be perfectly truthful, can we suppose that God is or can be more interested in one good deed than in another? This would be dangerously near making the divine being more limited in thought than we are. But the fact remains that many men's prayers relative to worthy purposes have been answered. It must be that the answer to prayer is in the prayer when it is prayed and not in the inclination or the disinclination of God to answer some and not others. God answers prayer according to law and order, the immutable law and order of the universe, 
Prayer is a thought, a belief, a feeling arising within the mind of the one praying. This feeling becomes a complete belief and a perfect acceptance when the mind is most completely in tune with the infinite. The mind is the most completely in tune with the infinite when the emotions are most constructively aroused. The highest faith comes from the greatest spiritual awareness. The prayer of faith is answered because the prayer of faith admits of an answer while the prayer of unbelief does not admit of one. Perfect faith is an unqualified acceptance of the desired result, and this acceptance is a mental attitude which cannot be shaken by any objective evidence to the contrary. The prayer of faith looks through the apparent condition to a perfect fulfillment. Prayer is a mental attitude aspiring toward God as the great giver of all. Faith is the acceptance that God has given or is now giving. Prayer and faith are both mental attitudes. A continual prayer of faith repudiates all that contradicts the desired end and culminates in positive acceptance. When prayer removes distrust and doubt that enters the field of mental certainty, it becomes faith, and the universe is built on faith. The mind will soar to new heights when fired by a potent, constructive emotion. This explains why people with high spiritual emotions generally receive the most direct answers to their prayers. It matters not what stimulates the emotion so long as it is constructive and agrees with its ideal. The intellect is a cold thing, and a merely intellectual idea will never stimulate thought in the same manner that a spiritual idea does. It so happens, or the universe is so organized, that it is quite impossible for us to arouse the highest emotions and the most creative ones without using the highest ideals. These ideals are always what we call religious or spiritual, but spirituality and religion are not to be thought of as either unnatural or supernatural. Spirituality means dependence on the spirit. Religion concerns belief in God. Both are normal and quite natural to the average person. God gives some more than others because some accept more than others. The divine giver himself knows nothing about size. Prayer should build up a greater acceptance of God's life, truth, and action, and when it does, the response will be commensurate with the higher acceptance. When the whole emotion is aroused and the mental acceptance is complete, the answer will be certain. The law has not changed, but has responded in a different way. In an effort to discover more fully the nature of prayer, is becomes a matter of finding out more about the processes of thought and emotion which are the ingredients of prayer in order to do this. It is a case of ascertaining the nature of mind in action, which easily and quickly resolves itself into a science of mind. The universal mind contains all knowledge. It is the potential ultimate of all things. To it all things are possible. To us as much is possible as we conceive according to law. Should all the wisdom of the universal be poured over us, we should yet receive only that which we are ready to understand. This is why some draw one type of knowledge and some another, and all from the same source the source of all knowledge. The scientist discovers the principle of his science. The artist embodies the spirit of his art. The saint draws the spiritual awareness into his being, all because they have counted the particular presence of some definite concept. Each state of consciousness taps the same source, but has a different receptivity. Each receives what he asks for, according to his ability to embody. In this way, the universal is infinite. The possibility of differentiating is limitless. We waste much time in arguing over things that cannot be answered. When we have arrived at the ultimate that is the ultimate, it is the way the thing works. Therefore, we have a right to say that there is a law involved and that this law executes our word or prayer. We discover laws, find out how they work, and then begin to use them. Therefore, we say it is the nature of thought and of creative law to be this way. I would say that law is an attribute of God. God did not make law. It coexists with the eternal. The infinite law and the infinite intelligence are but two sides 
of the infinite unity. One balances the other and they are the great personal and impersonal principles in the universe. Involution is the inworking of the conscious and the volitional and evolution is the outworking of that which is tangible and mechanical. We can no more do without religion than we can do without food, shelter, or clothing. Indeed, the religious instinct is so firmly implanted that it is inseparable from life and living. According to our belief in God will be our estimate of the life here and hereafter. To believe in a God of vengeance is one thing, but to believe in a God of love and a just law of cause and effect is another. We live in a universe of spirit and of law. From the one we are to draw inspiration, from the other we are to utilize power. Each is a complement to the other, and both are necessary to existence. To believe in a just law of cause and effect, carrying with it a punishment or a reward, is to believe in righteousness. To believe in eternal damnation for any soul is to believe in an infinite monstrosity, contradicting the integrity of the universe and repudiating any eternal loving kindness inherent in God. To feel that we suffer for our mistakes is justice, but to feel that our mistakes are eternal is to be already in the suppositional hell of a false theology. A sin is a mistake. A mistake is a sin both will ultimately be done away with. To believe that evil draws as great benefits as goodness from the storehouse of God is unthinkable, and to feel that some are foredoomed forever to be evil is also unthinkable. It denies solidarity to the universe and creates a house eternally divided against truth. All truth is our truth. No man robs us of our own soul, and our spirit is already one with the eternal goodness. Every man's belief is good insofar as it is in line with reality. We have no controversies with anyone. As we claim freedom, so we extend its privileges to everyone else. We will give and accept on no other terms. We study the thought of the ages and are not ashamed to admit any falsity in our own thought. We are after the truth and shall be satisfied with nothing less than the truth which proves itself to be really true. We are scientific searchers for that truth which makes man free and we know that we have found entrance to it. The past is behind, and whatever doubt it may have held is gone with it. The future is before bright with prospects. The eternal sun of righteousness is ever ascending, never to descend. Let us look toward the high goal of lasting attainment, fearless and happy. Let us live in the present, looking neither backward in horror nor forward with apprehension, but looking into the present with joy, abiding in faith. Religious science is a correlation of laws of science, opinions of philosophy and revelations of religion applied to human needs and the aspirations of man. Ernest Holmes I really enjoyed reading this. Some of these prayers at the beginning of this book are just absolutely amazing. I'm definitely going to come back to some of these and uh, I probably plan on making some of these a part of a meditation and a sleep meditation. If you had a favorite prayer at the beginning, let me know. All kinds of different authors were presented. One of my favorites is Robert H. Bitzer and by the time you're hearing this, most likely will have played one of his books. He was amazing and had his own religious science church in Hollywood and you can hear him on YouTube. And Raymond Charles Barker, we've also covered. He is also amazing. And check out my episodes where I read some Raymond Charles Barker, including one of my favorites, Money is God in Action. A fantastic little writing by Raymond Charles Barker. And Ernest Holmes at the end, I found to be fascinating. I have not read as much from The Science of Mind but I have read the Creative Mind episode and I have certainly read the book Science of Mind, which I might try to do on the channel if we can get it within 12 hours. I think I can. And 
at some point I'd like to read that to you because it will blow you away. It's a very powerful book and gets right to the core of thinking and creating reality. In the multitude of my thoughts within me, thy comforts delight my soul. Psalm 94, 19. My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. Exodus 33, 14. And welcome to the Reality Revolution. Yeah.